M0FXB, welcome to my videos on the TYT 9800 quad band radio. Today we're using the original software. You can use Chirp, but today we're using the original software. I'll put a link in for you to download the software and the driver, just here. And you connect to the rear of the radio. You can see here it's just underneath the power cable. The TYT cable you use normally comes with the radio, but if not, you will need to purchase one. I advise that you get one when you buy the radio for the first time. It's got like a square end, it's like a mini USB. So plug that into the back of your radio, then plug it into your PC. On your PC, right click, go Device Manager, and click Ports, just here. And mine's coming up as prolific PL203GS USB COM8. Okay. Then software wise, go to the download link that you can see on the right hand side here. Click download and then you know extract that to a folder and run it. And you'll end up with this program open that you can see on the left. I've already added some memory channels, and you just go to view at the top here. Actually, no, setting, sorry, setting here, port, choose the correct port, and 8 is here, so I've clicked OK, and then we've added these already, I'll just quickly send them to the radio, like so, and then we'll read again, but you can see that it works very fast, you don't actually see anything on the radio change when it's reading and writing, and like I said, I've just used this with Chirp, and it worked fine. So not, uh, I think there are more settings that I can see in the original software. Uh, but it's definitely, you know, if you want to get the names in, it's well worth it. Uh, another thing is to go to menu 9. Oh, the radio, did you, did you see that? The radio did reboot when it loaded. So go to menu 9. If you want to see, go press the dot in the middle there. Turn to number 9. Then press the channel change knob. And then it, you want it to say name, okay? Hit the dot to come out. Okay, and then you'll, it'll display the names that you add into the programming software. So let's have a quick look here what we can do. It's, oh, that says channel edit window there. That's cool. It opens up a separate little window there for channel one. And as you look, you can scroll through. You get a full window if you click the box at the top that says channel edit. And I've added a, a, free, a few channels. Quite handy, I didn't see that before. But anyway, otherwise you just click it line by line. Say we want to add a new one here. Just here, we'll just put in say GB3WR, so we'll go 145.600 and we'll do the shift and the tone so first of all it's the tone ctcss tone let's choose the right one and we want it on transmit there are it's 94.8 go to the end put the name in GB3WR, set your power, I think of anything else, let's, let's just go to the channel edit window and do the full one, go to 14, has come up, WR, code, squelch mode, mm. just leave it as carrier, TX power, leave that high for now, display type, Name, I'm going to put name for now so it displays the memory. And then we've even got talk, talk around, beat shift, reverse, anyway, AM if you want it. And then, yes, this does do AM. Let's go to the some of this other stuff here. VFO. So that's your sort of default VFO. And look at the, you've got 30 megs, 50, 150, three, it's, it's, you know, it receives a lot. 450, all your tones. Scan channels, not ever used that before. Basic settings. 
squelch, beep, volume, all that kind of stuff. Timeout. And what your keys do, because you've got pre-programmable keys that are uh, on the actual microphone. Around the display, I notice you've got A, B, C, D. They, they tend to change bands, as far as I can see. I don't think that can be changed, but yes, it does do DTMF really well. And the frequency range, I've noticed that you've got a frequency range here. I don't know if you can, this is where you would modify it. Um, I'll have a quick look at that in a separate video. And then up here, you've got read and write. So we did write to the radio. Let's, uh, let's read, click start. So up here, the little yellow arrow, start, and it's reading. So I think, I think that's it. All the links are in the description. Try it out. And then you might prefer Chirp. Think about, the good thing about Chirp is you can, you, there's a lot of things that are built into Chirp that you, where you can copy and paste from other radios. And I can see the appeal of that. They've got repeater book built in and radio reference and other items. They've got banks of frequencies that you can that you can get from. So uh, give that a go as well. Before I end, I'll just quickly show it on Chirp. So here's Chirp. Download from radio. You select the com again, the radio model, and just click OK. And it's reading from the radio, even though it's connected to the other software. And you'll see the extra little bits you get with Chirp. Now, it's, even Chirp says this is experimental software. That's that, populated. And there's my memory channels that we've put in. Settings here, same kind of stuff. The thing you get that's different is this one here where it says query source. And look, repeater book. We've got things like this. Uh, let's try it, United Kingdom. It's a free directory, so I just click OK. See what it does. Wow, what's all that? It's brought in loads of stuff from repeater book. So let's just, we wanna, I do want this, but I don't wanna lose my memories that I'd already put in. But hey, let's just send it there anyway. Look at that, just for fun. So we'll go radio, upload to radio, click OK. So there's Chirp as well. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Bye for now.